Now that is a handy little package. Let's take a look at the Raynick 1080p Sport Action Camera. I've looked at a lot of action cams over the years. This one looks kind of interesting to me. It's about 72 bucks on Amazon, so I thought I'd give it a look. This is the Action Cam X. You can see it's got 1080p, 30 frames a second resolution, so it's not 60 frames a second, a 170 degree wide angle lens, and a two inch LCD on the back. And this was actually all that was in the Amazon box. There wasn't any outside box. It was just this package. Very nice nylon case though. Now inside of the package, I think I'm gonna flip it over. It feels like everything's about to fall. There we go. Now that is a nice surprise. Came with a Kingston 32 gig micro SD card. You've got an absolute buttload of accessories in here. Look at the stack of accessories that came with this. Now there's this sort of random one-off what appears to be a back plate, a USB wall wart that outputs five volts at one amp, microfiber cleaning cloth, a small collection of zip ties and what looks like a little metal lanyard, micro USB charging cable, an assortment of straps and Velcro, a couple of these sticky GoPro mounts with three M pads on them, the action camera user manual version 1.0, and I think I've hit the bottom of the barrel. The last thing included is of course the camera itself. We got a cover here on the back of the waterproof casing. Let's go ahead and break into the waterproof casing. There we go. Just grab this and, and really have to heft it to get it off. I've never owned a real GoPro other than the Session, so I'm not that familiar with this. But that's got a nice little clasp mechanism on it. And you can kind of see around the sides, you've got what looks to be a very nice seal. Let's break that open. And you do have, like I said, one replacement back for it in case you need it. And then inside of the waterproof casing, of course, there's your action camera, complete with lens cover. And it's got a screen protector on the back. I think I may actually leave that one on there, but it doesn't look like it's gonna stay, so I'll just go ahead and peel it off. There you go. Just a second, let me go ahead and clear up all of this. All right, much better. So here's the camera. It says on the front, Wi-Fi. It says full HD 1080p. Here's the power button and the lens, of course. Little front-facing LCD. It's probably just gonna give you some information about what you're filming. On the side, you have your micro SD card slot, mini HDMI, as well as micro USB. Wi-Fi button here on this side, and then your two inch LCD on the back. Let's go ahead and power this on. There's also the record button on top and what appears to be the microphone. And actually, I just pushed the button and it's turned on. It does say 1080p 30, full HD, and it shows that it has probably two thirds battery. And then on the back, it says 1080p wide, shows that it's in video mode. And of course it says no card. So let's tear into this one. Had a bit of a weird time trying to get this card to go in here, but it finally did go in. It says I have five hours, 24 minutes and 46 seconds remaining, if I'm reading that right. And then when I hit the button, there's my time, and it looks to be recording. And it is a decently wide angle image if I'm seeing it correctly in my little viewfinder over there. But yeah, just looking at the image from it, it, it looks pretty decent. I'm not gonna say that it's the best looking thing I've ever seen, but not bad. And you can see on the front of it there, the counter timer, it shows you how long you've been recording for, lets you know that you are recording. We hit the button again, it goes off, it says that we're not recording. So let's go ahead and hit this button. That changed it over to photo mode. Now it says 12 megapixel wide, so. We just took a photo, not bad, not bad. And we're hitting the button again, it's changing the mode every time. Ah, and then we get settings. So now we're back to video. So video, photo, burst, and burst just takes three shots. And then timer, which counts down for three seconds. It said two, one, click. Then from here, I think you can view your videos, your photos, and go into your settings. So if I hit video, it shows me the videos that I've made. Yeah, and the video quality doesn't look that bad so far. The audio doesn't sound great, but it's an action camera. You normally don't expect great audio. I think the Wi-Fi button does a back. Yep, that appears to be the back button. I'll we'll change over to photo mode. We can change over to settings. We'll hit that. And here you can change all of the settings you want to change. Now this is not a touch screen. So you just change things by hitting mode. That goes to the next one, next one, so on and so forth. So video resolution. We've got 1080p 30 or 720p 60 for exposure. We have all these exposure compensation things we can do. Photo resolution, there you go, 12 megapixel, all these wide settings. You've got burst photo options, time lapse options. Let's check that out. Time lapse, you can have it do every two, three, five, or 10 seconds, or 20, 30, or 60 seconds. Continuous lapse, on or off. Power frequency, 50 hertz, 60 hertz, or auto. Date and time settings, sound indicator. I definitely need to turn that one off. Oh, that's much better. Yeah, all the sounds off, just because I really don't like that. Upside down, so if you wanted to hold it the other way, you could do that. Screensaver, power saver, and format. That's about it.
So really nice that you can actually control the grand majority of things that this will do from inside of the camera. And I think the last thing to show about it, just in terms of the hardware, is down here at the bottom. You can see it says up. There you go. You do have a removable, replaceable, rechargeable battery. In this case, it's a 3.7 volt lithium ion, 1050 milliamp hour, 3.885 watt hour battery. Let me just slide it right back in, put your little door on. And actually taking a quick look at their user manual, it shows you all of the accessories that it comes with. It shows you some of the possible mounting options for for what you can do with all the straps and everything, different ways you can mount it using the waterproof housing and the, the additional clips that it comes with, different modes and how to do time lapses, how to use the app. It works with both iOS and Android. And yeah, at this point, I think I probably ought to go ahead and stop, do some sample videos with this, some sample photos and everything, and we'll get back with you. All right, so let's take a quick walk around with this and just see how some of the footage looks as we walk through the house. So far, looks nice and clean, looks pretty good. I think when we get into some darker areas of the house, we're probably going to see some graininess. Here's a, a bit of a dimly lit room. We should also have some significant background sound because Duncan's in here watching some Rhett and Link. There you go. Let's walk into the kitchen. It's very dimly lit in here, so not a whole lot going on. Very wide angle though. And then we step out back and you can see very brightly lit outdoor scene. Sort of pan around a little bit here. Actually, it looks like it's doing pretty well in terms of being stable. I'm holding it on just a, a little mini gorilla pod, but it looks like it is just holding together pretty well. It's, it's being pretty stable. So I'll be curious to see what this footage looks like and what it sounds like. I'm holding this on the little mini tripod because I've noticed if I touch it basically at all, you get a lot of handling noise. The plastic really transfers that sound. But if you're not holding it, it seems to do all right. And I think I'm gonna go ahead and wrap the video up there. I did a very quick time lapse with it. The time lapse actually turned out pretty well. It was just a series of still JPEGs that I was able to put together after the fact. As far as the video quality, the video looks good. The audio sounds okay, it's not amazing, but it appears to be just slightly out of sync, which is kind of odd. I tested out the app. The app is just kind of plain Jane, gets the job done. It doesn't have the ability to manage time lapses, but you can start videos and take photos, make changes to a lot of the settings, but again, not everything. So it's kind of a mixed bag. For me, when you look at it with all of the included accessories, Accessories, the price point, which is around $79, and I do have a coupon code down in the video description for that, and I think it takes $5 off of that. At that price point, a 1080p camera, it's really not all that bad. So you can find the link to that down in the video description. Thanks to Rainick for sending this out for me to take a look at. Thanks to you guys for watching. Leave a thumbs up if you like the video. Subscribe to receive more. We'll see you again next time.